gonna be another hot one today. And it is very early and I'm already drenching this shirt. It's already 88 degrees with 70% humidity. Yesterday we had a heat advisory and probably gonna be the same today. It's supposed to start raining around one maybe. I got a lot of work to do before then. See if I can't at least get access to this colony I'm going to remove because it's in a brick column. Mr. Ed likes to make fun of me. said it looks like I'm doing laundry in the back of my truck all the time. <laughs> I gotta have dry shirts though and towels. So where I'm going today, this might turn into a two day job. As a hive, it's been there for many years, but I've been over there every year for the past three or four years. Somebody will call a different owner, different tenant, whatever. I, I don't know the situation with the property, but people's got it now called, called me over. They're flipping it or rehabbing it to sell or something that finally somebody's willing to pay for it because everybody else is like, oh, you don't just rescue for free. I'm like, this is a day, maybe two days worth of work. The last time I did a removal from brick, it turned into a trap out. It was a really, man, I still got video footage of that that I didn't want to show just because how bad, how bad the job went. It was a really old house built by a really rich family. We, we rented a man lift that it wasn't just for me there's a lot of other work to do on the property that required a man lift but we, we rented a man lift got it over there set up and I tore I tore down this really ornate trim I say tore down I, t I disassembled it saved it salvaged it I was able to put it all back but when I got into this exterior wall of this home Man, it was like a bank vault. It was two layers of brick, and it was really hard mortar. It was built in the 20s, 30s, 40s. I don't know what they used in the mortar, but my hammer drill wouldn't stay on the mortar. I'd try to go between brick and, and stay on the mortar line, and it would walk off the mortar and go into the brick. So after getting a couple bricks out and realizing this wall is twice as thick as I think it is, and I'm gonna have to do a whole lot more demo just to get to what I need to get to, with about a $20,000 shower on the other side of the wall that I'm trying not to damage. I just said, you know what? I'm putting this sucker back together and we're gonna trap it out. I hate it. If we leave some comb, some honey in there and it runs down the walls, I'll figure that out later, but I'm not chancing destroying a shower uh, like this to get a small colony of bees out. Cause it would. They'd been in there a little while, but they weren't really super active. So uh, maybe I can find that video and share it on this one. Before I get on that job, do I gotta drop the little work cart? So Elizabeth can put some stuff in the dumpster. Oh, you scared me. Oh, you got my breakfast. You're about to get mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who did breakfast leave? Thank you. <laughs> Been putting in those late hours <laughs> for weeks rehabbing this thing. Huh? I said, don't show my trim work. <laughs> oh, it it don't still matter. looks as bad this morning as it did last night. Nah, it looks it looks as good as any manufactured home. I still gotta finish out that window. Messes. Yeah, we were hanging all this hardware last night. That's pretty solid. <laughs> That's that PVC trim rubbing on that fiberglass tub. We gotta do something with that. Well, here's what we're dealing with. So we got bees coming out all sides of the column. Every nook and cranny and then all the way down here at the bottom. So the fact that they're using that weep hole for an entrance tells me that column's probably gonna be pretty full. I think we'll start, start about chest level here. We got a dusty bee coming out. 
<laughs> this is this is about halfway down the column, roughly. And I stuck a rod in there and we're hitting honey right there. Yeah, so I scoped, we couldn't see anything with the scope, so I have a fiberglass rod, like a flag, like a flag pole antenna or whatever, and I just uh, went straight in and I'm hitting something right there. I'm hitting structure right there. It must be I, I'm guessing I'm on a support for that. I'm on a support for that at this point. So I had to angle a little bit to get around it. I'm hitting honey right there. <laughs> so is that your dad up under uh, the power lines? Out on hanging out with me for the day. Me and him known each other since junior high, maybe. Yeah, long <laughs> time. <laughs> These brick ones are not easy. Plus, it makes a mess on the cones. We're gonna try to save all the honey. And in order to do that, we're probably gonna have to give the bees time to clean it up. It's hot today. <laughs> Listen, you ain't even sweating, man. What do you do? <laughs> Run out of fluid. <laughs> I'm already out. Dehydration's your secret. <laughs> There's something in here. I'm walking away from everybody because the bees are a little irritated with me. So I'm going to draw the attention elsewhere. I've got the wrong bit for my hammer drill. That's a receiver type bit and I've got a chuck on mine. So I got to run right around the corner. Hardware store is about a mile away. Run around and see if I can't find the right bit for it. Cause I got access now. But this mortar ain't gonna just turn loose like I want it to. Are you gonna do it? Get slow, 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 very slow. Very slow movement. Don't jerk. You didn't even touch it. Come on. Oh, where's <laughs> push, push your finger all the way through, right where them holes are. Stretch your finger out. Slow, slow. They all come in. <laughs> okay, back up. Back up. You're jerking around too much. You gonna try again? Really slow, slow, slow. There you go. Poke your finger into that. No, no, no. Keep going. I got it. No, you didn't get it. Oh, you got a little dab. You got a little dab. I don't know if you could taste it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Easy. Yeah, just push into it. There oh my go. gosh, wow. Oh, wow. Woo, That's a lot. Yeah. I think I got wrong because I didn't wash the hands. <laughs> We're lining there it up. Is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he got, he's he's going to keep going until he gets. All right, here's our post. We got a six by six on one corner, probably a six by six on the other corner, and hive all in between. I'm hoping I can get, I hope there's enough room to reach between the posts to get that back corner. If not, I'm gonna have to break out brick on front and back corners. This is where we got so far. A lot of hard work, hammer drilling. Kind of drilling the mortar, compromise it, knocking the bricks out. I'm trying to save the bricks. I've broken one, but uh, so far they're coming out. Hole. Got Caleb out here on the assist. He's been running my smoker a little bit, kind of checking things out, uh, doing an inspection with the flashlight. Caleb's running the job, really. I'm just a laborer. Oh. Ain't that right? Um. <laughs> See those finger holes in the combs? Guess who did that? Not on me. Not on me. <laughs> A lot of mortar dust in this thing. Got a couple of different things we could do. We could kind of so hose it and leave that's it. That's going to be a problem. Kind of, kind of like JP did on one recently. Kind of hose it and leave it, let them clean it up, or cut it. I think we're just going to cut it and, and uh, lose this outside comb. Probably the outside comb is really protecting the rest of it from the ground. Man, it's coming down, ain't it? Well, we went for so long without having any rain. Head out to get them. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. That'll be good. Oh, yeah. Time, One more for good measure. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Forecast says it might clear up a little bit this afternoon and more rain after that, but that's as far as we've gotten. I probably won't go any further. I've already drilled this. I'll probably knock out these two and that'll be as far as I go down because we're getting down to some empty combs and I'm thinking maybe I can reach in there and not have to break out any more brick and just do everything uh, by reach. It can't. That was a tornado. No lie. Had to be. It was blowing stuff all over the place. If it wasn't a tornado, it was close. I was over here fooling with this and something hit me in the leg and I was like, time to quit. My work area is saturated and my smoker was about to go out. It would burn down everything. So I found some dry material under the top of this. Just repacking my smoker. Work area got washed out pretty good, but I think I'm fixing to set up and get back to it everybody's doing repairs finishing my breakfast that's what I'd look like if I worked in the coal mines sun came back out I stayed and finished knocking out the brick I don't see the bottom but I think I'm getting close to the bottom because I've got capped combs all the way down to right there and then they're starting to be open cells so I'm not gonna do any more demo down there up top I'm at the end of comb it's the top of the hive right there so what I'm about to do is all this dust from drilling is all over this outer comb it's all over some of the inner combs too but the outer comb especially but right now i'm gonna take a uh, leaf blower and blow this out and let them stew overnight see all that honey running they'll get in here and clean all this up clean a lot of the dirt up and this outside comb we're going to cut off and abandon it to the bees i'll put it on my yard and let them have it back a lot of bees in there i've just got them run off the combs right now with the smoker and and with the drilling and the dust I'm fixing this Blow this thing clean and go home. Good job, bro. dust is going to set them on a cleaning frenzy tonight we're going to let them work this all night long cut this outer comb off we should be harvesting a whole lot of capped clean honey tomorrow all right got me a dry shirt on my britches is still saturated so let's go on in a convenience store and get us something to drink so everybody can stare at me and think i must have wet my pants that's it for today i'll be back on this one in the morning nice jeep lady day two of some of the baddest bee removal action you're gonna see on youtube <laughs> today i get to go cut the hive out did all the nasty work yesterday although mr ed might disagree he might think today was nasty work because some some reason he hates getting honey on him like a he's like a mechanic not liking to get his fingers greasy i don't know what that's all about going to cut this hive out today bless these people with a whole lot of honey hopefully let them get to straining it try to strain all that grit out real quick let's see what we've got this morning wow we got a lot of bees in here i guess they had their hands full cleaning that hive out because there's still honey running no robin going on thankfully They've got the top pretty well clean. That's gonna be tough to salvage in that honey. We're gonna see though, they're gonna try to strain it and see if it'll strain out. 
start on the bottom, smooth these bees up, and we'll just start taking these outer combs. Look at that second comb, man, it looks so clean and pretty. It's perfect. Nasty. That second, honey, that second comb looks good, but that first one's gonna be tough and strange. I don't think it'll be a hassle. I just don't know how clean it'll get, but it won't take long to find out. Put it on the, uh, look at all that honey in the back there, just waiting. Memory was full on the iPhone, so we're swapping cameras now. <laughs> Less mortar to filter out, I guess. Yeah, I hope this does come clean because that's a lot of honey. It's got some pretty natural breaks at every place where there was mortar coming into it so it's not having to I'm not having to cut it I done taking two stings to the scalp I don't feel good I'm gonna start on some of this cleaner stuff now and then as I get in deeper in the wall, I'll start going down. That one cone. There's a dark and a light on it. Look how clean the honey is. I'm running bees out of it right now so I can cut some more. Pretty soon I'm going to have to start vacuuming there. Decided to go ahead and rock the 80s headband because it's getting real hot out here. And I'm just, I'm already drenched. It's the third comb in. You, I know you can't hardly tell it. The first one's right here covered with junk. But anyway, one, two, three combs in, fourth comb in. Got a little bit of brood in it. A little bit of bee bread, a little bit of brood. Can't tell if I'm focusing on the right thing or not, but the uh, backside of comb number three had a little bit of pollen in it and bee bread, no, no brood on it, but I cut the pollen off of it. some brood, but right back there. First full brood cone being backfilled. Got some open brood in that last piece I pulled up. Well, here it is right here. So this cone right here is brood cells sporadically placed on the back. A lot of open uh, uncapped honey. We got capped honey on the front, which is good to harvest for long-term storage. So what we're gonna do is just fillet this piece of comb here and scrape the honey off the back. We'll probably gain about a, I don't know, half a pint off of this one piece by that. So if you got combs that you think you're gonna have to dispose of you want to keep the honey off of it you can just fillet it like that and that way that's all good cured honey right there that we just put in the bucket everything on the back side that's not cured down or it's got brood on it goes in our trash bucket 
you know, whatever else on here, the, our bees will take that back when we get them back home and get this on the yard. And that's how you do that. All right, I cut down the sides, both sides of this comb as far as I could. I'm hoping we're gonna pull this out and see how deep this goes. Ugh. Oh, there it goes, it, it released. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, did it release or did it tear out? I think it tore off. Brand new baby girl. Yeah, it's a new bee. It's yeah. hatching. Yeah. Right. You want, if you want to help her out, you can grab her and pull her out. The stinger's not there? She's, she's too soft to sting you. Don't squish just, her. Just gently grab her by her head. Easy, easy. There you go. There's a stinger. Oh! There's a brand new pet. Okay, you let her go. We'll put him in your pocket. <laughs> I don't have pockets. Uh -uh. I'm just uh -uh. joking. Don't, She'll fly. don't squish her. No, she can't fly. Oh. So what will she do? She'll climb around and go eat something. Okay. I don't know if it's a fine. What is he trying to pick one up? Yeah, yeah, he what? Yeah. I got two more buckets out there. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, but it's that dirty stuff. He's going to strain it separate. Uh-huh. Okay. That right there, I think I knocked off when I pulled that first one out. We got eggs and young, young larvae. And a whole lot of bees just camping out, waiting to be vacuumed up. I hadn't fired up the vac yet, but I'm about to. I'm probably going to take this, it's probably three more combs deep. I'm going to take that out and then start working up. <laughs> Two days in a row. We got blowing rain off and on. I'm going to cut out for a few minutes, me and my Bon Jovi looking headband going to the store to get some cold drinks. Let this blow over for a little bit. Took off for about an hour. Let me show you what they've done while I've been gone. They've been working on repairing and cleaning up all these cuts. So all this stuff that I cut that would have been wet with honey before is dry now. So they can't, they've taken all that and moved it somewhere. We got a little bit of a robin frenzy starting on the cutout cone. They're not really bothering this yet. Still enough bees in there to defend it, although I have vacuumed out about two pounds. But I still got plenty of bees in here to defend that. There's just no bees to defend this. That's a sad reality. So my buddy Aldon here, me and him traded a couple of cars many years ago. And I couldn't even remember. I knew I got it from him or his mom or somebody, but I couldn't even remember what it was or how I came about it. Just knew it was an old Fury 3, Plymouth Fury 3. I thought it was a 70, but it was a 72, right? Yep. 72, and I had a Gran Torino, just like the one that Clint Eastwood had in that movie, Gran Torino. Neither, neither one of the cars were in great shape. Both of them easily restorable. They weren't, neither one of them were garbage. But we're talking about back in, what, in the late 80s, late 80s or something, but and you know, back before we knew these cars were going to be worth anything, the old Plymouth needed a little bit of work. And the Torino probably needed a com complete restoration, but it was a whole car. I took this old Plymouth and we cut it all kinds of ways. We cut the quarter panels out of it, knocked some windows out of it, took the back window out of it, put an old tractor tire in the trunk just to, just for just being funny and went mud riding in it and just beat it to pieces until there was nothing left of it. We were jumping ditches and running over trees and all kind of stuff with this whole thing. It was a torsion bar front end. We had the front end jacked up like a four wheel drive pickup truck and just beat it till it was worthless. In the meantime, Aldon took this Torino 
And were you going to restore it? What were you going to do with it? I pulled the 302 motor and the transmission, and it had the C4 transmission and the 302, yeah. and put it in a 68 Mustang. <laughs> so Aldon guts this Torino and puts the running gear in a Mustang and hauled the Torino across the scales. And then, you know, 25, 30 years later, that movie comes out, and now that, now that car's worth all kinds of money. Both of them probably are worth decent money today, but neither one of them exists anymore. For obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. And that's Redneck Investing 101. <laughs> That's an investment strategy that does not pay off in the end. very back into this removal <laughs> I've gone through I've, I've filled up the memory on my iPhone I've run two batteries dead on my little cannon and I've shot a bunch of stills while I was waiting on this Samsung to charge up so now we're on the Samsung and I busted my squirt bottle I keep in the back of my truck some I must have thrown a ladder on it or something but I busted the top off of it so all that ran out in the bed of my truck at some point not any time recent because I don't smell it but I had to run back home thankfully I'm maybe six miles from home wasn't too far to run out and get some more I keep a gallon jug of it at my house Fisher's be quick is what I'm using it's been pouring down all day long well not all day it's been pouring down half the day so I've been in between showers my hair is saturated I just put on a dry shirt my pants my feet and socks are saturated but I'm done with the job other than collecting the few bees that are left hiding somewhere I don't have the queen yet I'm sure of it uh, that's what I'm fixing to go after now all right finally we're back in business with a camera this stupid Samsung I don't hardly ever use it I, it's been dead in the console of my truck I turned it on and after charging it turned it on and it went to do went to doing updates as soon as I got to doing that first little recording with it this entrance right here and this one right here I've sprayed with Fisher's be quick is what I use and I sprayed this entrance here and then here's what we've got running right here but there's these clustered back here this is the construction of this we got a big giant <laughs> what are you doing you got a beat in your ear no i closed my ear i think he's gone now he was up on the top of my ear yes i don't see it Anyhow, what we have going on here is right, you see this space right here, this runs uh, floor to ceiling, this space in here. We got bees that were running and hiding back in here. I sprayed some bee quick in there to run them out. And they're clustering up top here and coming out the back side of that post. And I just got to wait on them to get out here and pile up so I can vacuum them. Uh, 
I started shooting low down here so they wouldn't run down and just moved up. You can see how wet right there and right there. They had, they had a lot of space to hide there. And they've got more space up top to run up under that crown. I think they can go into the attic space. Access door right there, but you can't really see. <laughs> <laughs> Are they getting on you? Yeah, but it's fine. Yeah. There's, there's, I'm, I'm here, so. There's one on me right now. Yes. Yes, there is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if they'll catch that one. <laughs> there's probably a space up in the header where they can move because there's not as many coming out as there should be. I vacuumed a lot earlier, but I don't think I vacuumed that many. I'm gonna let them cluster up and see. Yeah. Double click that tail switch, it'll give you 3,000 lumens of glorious white light. Yay! I saw the light. Oh, yeah. That's where they went. You can see it now? Yep. I'm gonna go up there and catch it. Other than this ladder, once you get past this ladder, it's solid up here. Is it? So I don't know if you want to come up here or... I'll come up there. No, you're not coming up here. I'll have to prop a ladder on top of this ladder to do that because this ladder won't hold me. Well, and I was going to say, it depends on what you want to do. If you're going to try to... I don't know. Yeah, there's no outlet or anything up here. And, uh... But, yeah, there, there's one that's even crawling over here by me now. Yeah, they come, they'll come to the light. All right, here's where we're at now. We're gonna run bees out the soffit and out of the ceiling. And now I just got, I'm kind of waiting on the cluster up because I had some more back in here. But you can see I've got that wet with Be Quick. I got all this out here wet with Be Quick. And up in that attic, I got it getting saturated with Be Quick. So there ain't nowhere else for them to go but out here. And that's that's the goal. Run them out to where I can get to them. And if you don't know it, bees are drawn to white light at night. So if you're working with a flashlight or a light on a camera, on a cell phone like this, they will come to you. So I got them buzzing me, landing on my neck, landing on my legs and my chest. They're being fairly cooperative, but they are stinging every time I lean on one or bend my elbow and there's one in the crease of my elbow. Anything like that gets me stung, so I've taken a, quite a few hits. we got enough clustered out now, it's back time, so if you happen to see the queen, you can mention it in the comments. But right here is the closest angle I can see. And there's what you can see. This is not going to be a flashlight review, but Through Night sent me another light, a TH30. I told him I'd mention it if I used it in a video. It's got a tail switch on it and a sideways light, 3200 lumen, I think is what they advertise. It's pretty bright. I like it. I'm going to use it on this cutout. So there it is. I'm mentioning it. I'll link it below if you want one.